expose, expose that. And so after she came back, she's like, I had this really severe burning pain in my abdomen where this thing is, you know, and then later she recovered from that, that growth she had. So, you know, it, it, <laughs> and normally Reiki's a really nice experience that I think, and that was an extreme case because she had an extreme condition. Sure. And she was open to that level of healing with the group setting there. I think that she was open to experiencing that level of deep healing and, and transformation. But usually it's Reiki is a very relaxing experience. So people kind of go into half asleep, meditative uh -huh. state called an alpha brainwave state. And that's typically what brings us into a healing state. Hi, this is Scott Ware with Radiance Multidimensional Media, uh, the publisher of Radiance Magazine, which is in over 600 locations in Southern California. And this is interviews on Expansion Network and or you may be watching it on social media. And I have with me today a special guest, Mukunda Singh, who is an acupuncturist and energy healer. Uh, thanks for thanks for um, doing this interview, Mukunda. Hi, Scott. Thanks for having me on the call. Yeah. Um, you, um, it, w w I want to talk about a couple things. I want to talk about how good with fertility you guys are and pregnancy. Apparently what you guys are doing in your office is incredible with you and, and your wife and, and who you work, who else you work with. Um, also want to talk about uh, the Reiki uh, group that you have and the fact that you can do distance healing with the Reiki, of course, so they don't have to see you there. But people watching this, wherever they are, if you're in Pennsylvania, you might be, you're probably gonna be inspired to find an acupuncturist like Mukunda um, or a Reiki master. <laughs> and um, if you're, if you're in Southern California though, they're in Fountain Valley, get to Healing Light uh, Family Acupuncture. Isn't that right? That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Mukunda, you're one of the calmest people I know. You <laughs> have high vibe and, but you're, you're always so mellow. And how do you, how do you do that? First of all, what's your secret there? I, I guess I'm just born that way, you know, uh, my, mom, my mom's an old hippie and I kind of asked that question when I was a kid one time and she said, you're just naturally high. So I, I don't know how to take that exactly, but, uh, you know, I, I, I just, uh, I, I take things as they come in the moment and um, I enjoy life and, and life is meant to be enjoyed and um, I don't know, it's just who I am. Well, I haven't received acupuncture with the needles from you, and I have a feeling it would be a better experience. You, you have the calmness, you're not in a rush, um, but you also do something called esoteric acupuncture, right. and can you explain what that is? It sounds uh, like an, an update or an upgrade. Yeah, esoteric acupuncture uh, brings in sacred geometry in with the acupuncture points we already have. Mm. and activates we call them energy grids or maybe like you know, like circuits in the body that 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 balance the whole system um <clears throat> usually with esoteric acupuncture we're treating people who are looking to further themselves in their lives and sometimes it's people who are doing active spiritual work like meditation yoga different kinds of energy work on themselves and are looking to advance that practice mm -hmm. uh, but it's also people on transitions in life so let's say you're going through a divorce or career change or a new finding your purpose or something in that vein, or a big personal transformation forward in your life, this is a good time to get that kind of acupuncture. Well, and I know, you, you know, it, as far as the actual application, one of the things that's fascinating, because uh, I took a class from you and your wife, Tina, before, yeah. um, is that you're putting, you're, sometimes on, on an area of skin, you're putting two points down, and then the third point is something that we, in our mind, also direct to and focus on because all healing is self-healing right yeah yeah and you're talking about really bring in the sacred geometry works with uh with three-dimensional triangles or pyramids if you will so this is going from 2d to 3d the next step is is this these, these three points working together creating essentially a, a vortex a place where the, the spiritual energy can come and enter the body and so this is part of it as well um, part of this works like on the quantum field, which is very, uh, 
you know, kind of. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> kind of out there, you know. So talking about some of these things, um, you know, you can get really heady and kind of airy fairy and out there. But there's there's a real sense of calm, a sense of moving forward, a sense of progression that you're going to feel receiving these treatments, um, especially if you do any kind of uh, spiritual work, you know, whatever that is, whether it's meditation, prayer. Uh, self-healing, you know, with, with energy, different things, uh, you're going to experience a really in-depth uh, thing there. And, and I have patients that don't do any of that. And when they get some, some, I integrate some of the esoteric modules or the points into some of my regular acupuncture as well for my fertility patients, because oftentimes they have emotional blocks or there's trauma blocks of fertility that come up and that helps them naturally work through those and sort of in the background, just kind of work through it. Yes. Um, and, and for them, they just experience a sense of calmness, a deep sense of calm and relaxation. Maybe just kind of like, wow, I, like I've never felt this calm before. <laughs> and uh, so <clears throat> that's something to take away from the field. So, so a lot of fertility blocks then are not necessarily physical, but mental or, or in the field, energetic. I mean, the, we're, we're all one thing, Scott, right? So we have the physical body we work on. If there's a physical issue with the uterus, there may yep. be a lot of involvement with an OBGYN or things like that, or possibly needing surgery, things like that, right? And then if you go more into emotional uh, trauma or, or, or early ch childhood trauma, <clears throat> that is all often stored in the pelvic region of our body. So in the chakra system, we talk about that being the family area is the second chakra, the pelvis, and that's the sexual center. That's where the reproductive center is. So a lot of that early development emotionally can affect the physical part of our body there. Um, and this is, uh, you know, something that, that may be new to a lot of people, but I believe is very real and important. Yeah, a lot of this is very new to a lot of people. You got a, a good uh, Yelp uh, review, looks like. More than one, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> after my second session was done, I sat up to gather myself. My water broke. My baby girl was born the following day. And looks like, yeah, she was having trouble there. Yeah, so we, we do labor support as well, pre-labor support, and we help people who are trying to naturally go into labor, especially once they hit their due date or if they have a cutoff time with their doctor or hospital when they need to have their baby, it can be very helpful to naturally induce the process of going into labor. There are specific points I'm not allowed to do during pregnancy, and then so for that treatment, we throw all those points in and we get everything rocking and rolling as best we can. Now, that's a great story, you know, and I always say I can't guarantee you're going to come in, I put the point and the baby falls out, like if it were that simple, you know, <laughs> but but it, it naturally helps the hormones that be released that are in your system that will help uh, begin the labor process. Are, are you or your wife, Tina, womb whisperers? <laughs> That, that was one of the, the doulas that refer to us a lot, have referred to me as the womb whisperer. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you my secret here on the call today. Uh, my, my secret is that I, <laughs> it's so funny, womb whisperer. Um, my secret is that, that I do energy work and I, I connect with the baby. And I really feel that the baby, the baby and the baby's spirit guides the birthing process. They've already made mm. a decision on how they want to enter the world. And so when I treat the patient, I'll do my acupuncture piece, which helps their body go naturally into labor, but also connect with the baby spirit and see what, what do they want to do? How do they want to do it? And then I'll let the mom know if I'm picking something up from the baby, the baby may be sick ready now, or they know, and they're waiting a couple of days, or maybe they really don't want to come out at all. And they're just, you got to come out and get me whenever you want. Like I'm not coming out. So, you know, there's, and I feel there's something about the, the baby uh, has has already decided that. I know that sounds kind of out there, but I really yeah. do my best to connect with the spirit of the baby. And that's where that whole term came from. Um, you know, uh, and it's, it's I, I think, it. a magical time when, when the mom and baby first have an important task to do together. The birth process, the first time mom and baby work together in unison to create something amazing, to create this birth process. So I'm, it's really a joy to be a part of that and to help women in that process. Well, and I'm sure it wouldn't surprise people watching this to know that you are a dynamic partner with your wife, that you guys have a, a great partnership and you even have a term for her. What is that? Uh, uh, I, you know, she's my soulmate. You told me about five minutes before power, we started. Power partner was the word we talked about, <laughs> power partner. And I mean, that term is used also in business, but it's it, I'm using it now in a relationship sense. So in business, your power partners, let's say for me, be like a chiropractor that loves acupuncture, and then we can refer back and forth, and now we, we're a team. Uh, like we share 
a similar goal of, of, of holistic health, but we're in different lanes and we help them push each other. And so with my wife too, I feel that we're power partners as a couple and that we both do very similar things, but we also push each other to be more successful. And it's not competitive, it's, it's working together and pushing forward to create more greatness all around us. I, I was showing a, a few moments ago, all the services that you, uh, well, all the things that acupuncture can treat. And we've got hormone balance, um, sciatic, low back pain, of course, emotional balance. Now, people coming in, they're unbalanced and walking out balanced emotionally? <laughs> I'd like to think so. I mean, for the most part, people come in. I, I love to see the transformation from a new patient who comes in, I'll use the word kind of prickly. So they're kind of stressed and kind of, you know, and just kind of on edge yep. and kind of snappy, you know, and yep. then I just be my kind, jolly self as I normally can be, you know, and then, them, and then after a couple of visits, they come in smiling, they go, hey, how are you? It's good to see you. Oh my God. Yes. I love, I, I love you guys. And I love the world. And I go, okay. You know, I, and I, I just quietly know, I don't say anything. I just quietly note that transformation that people go through as, as they, they work with us for a time. And it's, it's nice to see that. And last year we, you know, uh, we've been dealing with COVID and we're still now, you know, uh, hopefully at the tail end of COVID. I mean, we're still in the process here, but um, yeah. all this last year, it's been really uh, people, the stress level has been to the max with my patients, whether it was political or whether it was health-wise with COVID, everyone was upset, you know? And so I really felt that we seem to be one of the few places that uh, people could still come to get support. You know, a lot of the body workplaces closed down. So the emotional support was a big piece last year for sure. Yeah. And people were like, I go to you and I go to the grocery store and I go home. And that was like, that was their, their stops for the week. You know, so I got to be part of their, their, their communal social support, emotional support. Um, and I was grateful that I could be there for them. Nice. Uh, you have some people that travel from pretty far to see you and Tina, don't, don't you? Uh, we've had patients come down from LA and, and uh, we're in, in Fountain Valley, close, close to Huntington Beach area. And we have people coming down San Diego, LA, you know, for treatments. And that's on a weekly basis. I have people come out from, from Big Bear <laughs> at times. So uh, yeah, and, and the East County area for sure, Riverside too. So people will trek out here to see us. And uh, I mean, I, I just am appreciative that people value our service and come out here to, to see us and grateful for that. And your wife is very um, much in, she's a doula, right? She's a, she's a doula. She's a, a, a birth instructor as well with hypno babies. Um, her passion is, is helping women uh, in all, all areas of their life. Um, right now, her focus really is on women's empowerment and, and coaching. And her, she loves pregnancy. If you, if you ask her, it'd be like, she loves being with pregnant women and supporting them, but sure. she loves helping all women in, in all areas of their life. Um, but that would be her current, her current real passion spot if you want to sure say. well yeah she's uh, the <laughs> owner of radiance of the womb what a coincidence mm -hmm. um and then um she's a birth doula hypnobirthing childbirth instructor and like you say a, a women's coach so they can reach out to her um and what's her website this is a test radiance of the womb.com radiance of the womb.com okay that was and a, what is yeah that was you easy <laughs> And what is Healing Light Family Acupuncture's website? HealingLightFamilyAcupuncture.com. So yeah, just add a .com on there and, and you'll find us. There um, it is. Okay. Yeah. So going back to your partnership, um, you are very much, you know, you're engaged with what, what, what some secrets to intimacy that you can impart to men out there, for instance, like like, um, cause that, and that's a subject of fascination to me as well as uh, the, I've, I've gotten to experience the benefits of being in a relationship with a woman who it, it just, the closer we get, the more, sometimes the more things pop up, but then we get to deal with them and get them away. And it's, you know, we're usually rewarded after that. Um, what, uh, what benefits do you see on closely working with your mate and how do you, what do you recommend? I think slowing down is really important, slowing down and listening a lot and asking mm -hmm. questions and not assuming that you know the answer. Um, this goes not just in my relationship, but also with, with clients, with patients and the men's work I do in the men's groups. A lot of it is just <clears throat> asking someone, what do, you, what do you want? What is important to you? And then really shutting up and listening, <laughs> you know, really not <clears throat> like, oh, you want this? Like, oh, no, 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 like, like just 
let them speak, get them, get it out. And if there are issues or concerns, I'd love to change my career, honey. Oh, okay. The alarm bells are going off in here. Like, oh shit, where's, where are we going to, sorry, these bad words. Uh, but oh my God, where, how are we going to be able to pay for things and all that, right? How, like, how are we going to live our life? And, and mm-hmm. then putting that aside for a second and just go, okay, you want to change, what kind of career would you like to go into? Let's talk about that. Let's, what, what excites you, you know? And so we went through that last year with COVID. Or my mom said, my, my, my wife, not my mom, but my wife said that she wanted to be home more with the kids and work less. And that was sort of a natural transition with, with them being at home, being needing more support with school, right? Absolutely. And yeah. so we found a way to do that. And, but part of it was just being quiet and listening and, and turning the alarm bells off for a second. Like, I know there's something to address here with, with maybe how we're going to pay for things, the finances or things of those nature, whatever they are. And we'll come back to that. We're not going to like push that aside completely, but to just note that that's there to, to come yep. to after we listen and hear all the message and kind of glean out what's the, what's the juice, what's the, what's the, what's in there for her that she's really like saying, I need this right now. And you go, okay, what is that need? Let's pull that out all the way. And then we can address all the, the, the day-to-day stuff that has to go around that. And that, okay. oftentimes the day-to-day stuff just sort of, you kind of find the answers pretty quick anyway, to be honest. You know? So what you're saying is when you're listening, your mouth shouldn't be moving. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's listening and also asking for more information oh that way yeah okay it's kind of like when my wife sends me to the store she says, i want these five things and I'll, I'll, I'll write back what and what else do you want right and so she goes and i also want this because i was there's always i'm at the store and then she and then she goes oh did you get this too and then you know i go oh i gotta go back to the store now <laughs> right so you kind of and you keep pulling it out all the way you know and maybe that's a frightening experience for us if we're really not okay with what the person's asking for or we're not sure how it's going to work out and so really owning owning that space of like i'm just gonna be courageous and sit and listening right and i know it sounds weird because listening is kind of like i just sit and listen and she's but actively listening and really gleaming it out of them you know (laughs) you know right so are you really just taking that that taking it all on you're like okay well this is the whole thing that this person wants or needs and let's listen to all of it and maybe you can't do all of it right that's a truth of life too so maybe like i really want to move to hawaii she says to me i go i don't know if we can do that right now you know yeah. or what, what would our life look like if we did that right we can play, play that game and go okay so we're going to move to hawaii what's the next step we got to find a job find a house find a okay can we do all those things and maybe right. we can't do all those things so maybe that's not an option right now or maybe that's a five, 10 year, 20 year plan, right? So it sounds like you work through some issues where, which happens a lot of us, where it's like, we, we hear a request, we hear something, and then um, it hits a brick wall. And, and or we feel, uh, maybe the other person feels put upon or, or challenged or backed into a corner that doesn't feel safe or good. And you just want to be, you just want to co-create. You know, you don't want to be coming from a defensive posture. You just want to be, it just have it flow. I think flow is an important concept for you. Yeah, definitely. And I think sometimes my partner is ahead of me in that creation process. And I'm still just doing the, the, the same old, same old, right? Kind of going through my day and everything's fine. Everything's good. And, and then she's ahead. She's like, okay, now we're going to make this shift. And I go, what, wait, what shift? Why? Why? Everything's good. Everything's fine. You know, and it's like, no, it's not fine. And then you go, okay, so are you ahead of me? Let's see. Like, what are you seeing? What are you? opening into how can I open into that as well how can I be part of that opening as opposed it sounds to- like that's that's part of what it is for you two that she has it was it fair to say that she's helped you expand you in that area I feel like it's a seesaw like we go back and forth sometimes you know I'll go we got to make this shift honey we got to do this and she goes I don't I don't know I mean that sounds like a lot and then, then we got to do this and the, our life's gonna be disrupted and da, 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 da. and I go okay and then it's the other way around where she goes you know I, we're gonna do this real soon like this has to happen soon I know it I feel it in my heart, my soul. This is what is calling to happen. And I go, okay, it's going to be a lot of work with that. We're going to do this. But I, I, I already see, I see things that she doesn't see, right? Sometimes I go, okay, like she, she knows it's, it's meant to happen. And then I see like, well, yeah, but how are we going to, what are the logistics of all that? And I right. can see that part going and I go, it can work. You're not going to like this part though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I know that and that, and she'll go, no, I'm all for it. And then we get there and she doesn't like that part. Like I thought, but everything else flows and it works out. And she makes peace with that part, right? Good. That sounds good. I, I, I love it. And <laughs> yeah, no. Well, and okay. So um, before we get to the men's uh, Reiki group that you do, it, and it's a men's group or the Reiki group or the oh, two groups? Separate things. So I have a welcome to everyone Reiki group. Uh, yep. 
I teach Reiki levels one, two, and three classes. And then everyone that comes to, to whatever level you come to, you can keep coming to those classes. So the community that's there practicing can keep practicing. So if you're a Reiki level one practitioner, you took the first class, you can keep coming to all my level one classes and practice with other students there and keep learning and honing your skills and have a community to be a part of, which I and, think is and, awesome I know, and you do it remotely too. You heal people remotely with, and it, well, you, you know, I know we use the word heal. Uh, it's different maybe than in other uh, areas, but do you, um, what are some success stories you've heard of either remote healing or in person uh, with your Reiki? Yeah. So in level two Reiki, we teach distance healing. And so part of each class, we actually take a massage table in one room and we put another one in another room and we send distance healing to every single person in the class. So they get to experience that healing. Um, and I had a woman who had a kind of growth in her abdomen who took my Reiki 2 class and we did the distance healing. I didn't know that and she hadn't exposed, exposed that. And so after she came back, she was like, I had this really severe burning pain in my abdomen where this thing is, you know, and then later she recovered from that, that growth she had. So, you know, it, it, <laughs> and normally Reiki is a really nice experience that I think in, that was an extreme case because she had an extreme condition. Sure. And she was open to that level of healing with the group setting there. I think that she was open to experiencing that level of deep healing and, and transformation. But usually it's Reiki is a very relaxing experience. So people kind of go into half asleep, meditative yeah. state called an alpha brainwave state. And that's typically what brings us into a healing state. What percentage of your patients know that they're coming to an acupuncturist, but they're also getting these added benefits of the energy work you do, the intuition you're using, which is all great and natural, but are they aware of it? I actually find quite a lot of patients come to me specifically because I, I do Reiki plus acupuncture and people have seen other acupuncturists, but that sets me a little bit aside. Not sure. to say other acupuncturists haven't learned Reiki as well. There are some that, that do both, but it's something that we promote on our website. I teach, I've been practicing Reiki for 20 years. So I mean, it's, a, it's a strong skill set for me. Um, and I've been in acupuncture for about 11 years. So, you know, there's a lot of experience in both those fields and integrating that um, helps have with- you, the, I was gonna say, have you toyed with the, the word Reiki puncture? <laughs> I have not, I have not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I find more and more that people in the area are looking for something. Um, they're having personal experiences. They're having experiences of experiencing something energetic, ethereal, spiritual, mm -hmm. intuitive. They're having some kind of, a call it, let's say uh, an, an awakening at some level of, of inner awareness, or they're having, you know, spiritual dreams or something like that. And they're, they're, they want to come to someone who has some framework to put that in. And often I have these really wonderful con 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 conversations with new patients about those things. Mm -hmm. and it's wonderful to, to be the ambassador for this world of energy healing and intuitive stuff and, and, and get to be that person. So I enjoy that. I, I would definitely call you a holistic practitioner. I mean, it sounds like when someone comes to see you, they're getting a world of information and, and um, care and wisdom from you. Like you say, you've been doing it for decades. And, uh, and I know it was in acupuncture college that you actually met your wife. Right. We met in the school clinic and uh, we were friends in the school. Uh, and then after I finished school, we started meeting up and, and connecting and we had a strong spiritual bond and that's also the foundation for our relationship so i, I would talking about the relationship piece again sure really look, look at what is the foundation for your relationship and for us you know finances have kind of come and gone in, in times you know and there's been ups and downs there but the 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 spiritual piece has always been there for us and and she's a person that when i have my intuitive experiences she also has similar experiences i don't have to explain myself thoroughly uh, and in times, you know, I've had partners who either put me up on the pedestal and they're like, oh, you're so spiritual, amazing. And, and I don't want that disparity. And other times people would reject me or they wouldn't understand or be afraid or, uh, you know, uh, that, and at that, of course, I don't want that, you know. So with my wife, I found someone who really understood me at a, at a core level, at a basic level. And um, that I think it's really important to ask yourself, if you're in a relationship, what is my, my core foundation with this partner? What's going to see me through the trials of life? Yeah. Very nice. Um, you uh, host a men's group. Uh, is it just any kind of men's group? What, what do you got going there? <laughs> it's a, uh, yeah, it's a, we have a men's group. We meet once a week, uh, Sundays at 10 a.m. And uh, we loosely modeled off of you know, the Mankind Project, you know, where we talk about 
Carl, Carl Jung's archetypes. It's, it's like a psycho-spiritual group in a lot of ways and support and community group. That's kind of how I would describe it. So mm. um, I believe Carl Jung was really talking not just about psychology, but also spirituality. I think those go hand in hand. I don't think they're separate entities, not for me anyway, or the way I, I just talk about them. But really it's about the evolution for men in our lives, the evolution of, of how we develop and being a multifaceted person that can tap in different parts of yourself. So there's these sort of different boxes you can put yourself in. We're all one thing, like I said earlier, but you can kind of break down. Carl Jung broke down our inner psychological, spiritual psyche. He created like anatomy for that. So we can like understand what are the pieces inside? How does, what does my soul look like if you wrote down a piece of paper, you know, and what, how can we break it down into get into different parts and maybe work wow. on parts that need support? So there's so a lot of- Yeah, it's an elevated men's group. Um, and. Is it, is it, why is it just for men? I think there's a space outside of society we're trying to create where it's just about uh, brotherhood and unity. We want to take the relationship piece out, you know, or that, that show, showboating that men can do around women in a, in a hetero setting, right? But, but really it's, it's just about being supported and listened to. And we don't want to bring in other elements that, that may. Could distract. That, could distract you know and um, certainly there's there's you know gay men are welcome as well and that that could be a little different dynamic perhaps but but it's really a safe space outside of normal society where you can be open completely open and be heard and listened to and accepted and that's what we're trying to create where there's not there's no agenda for us to do anything to anyone just to be there to listen to you completely and there's whatever you say is accepted the good the bad the ugly all of it you know that you've experienced or that you want to share so that's good which, and that's an unusual energy that's not readily available out there in society in right a, like more, if you yeah. if you feel like you have to yell to get an emotion that's stuck in your chest like if you do that out in the street like the cops will be called at some point and you might be arrested right but right. if you go to nature with a group of men and we're on a retreat and we all yell into the bushes into the trees the birds might fly off a little bit and be annoyed for a minute, but nothing else is really going to happen besides that. And there's something cathartic about that experience that that we're allowed some freedom of expression. And in society, we all kind of agreed that we're not going to yell and be crazy and you know punch each other, which is good. I, I like I enjoy that as well. Sure, you know, sure. but there has to be. And I'm not saying we punch each other in the men's groups. <laughs> we don't do that. Um, there's sometimes if if people want to do like a little like uh, wrestling or some kind of like you know gentle body movement to kind of just feel their bodies that can be helpful for a lot of people to get back into their bodies but that has to sure. be in a safe consensual setting of, of, of uh, you know a very controlled setting let's say sure um but in general so it's having place for expression yeah that's great you every week uh sundays at 10 so uh they get sleep in a little but not too much and, and make that and then uh when are, when do your reiki get together so the only online right now so, so uh, I have a Reiki group. We meet once a week online, uh, and we do a distance healing once a week on Saturday mornings from nine to ten. Um, and yeah. so, we do that once a week. And then I'm starting to have in-person classes in April and May. You're, we'll you're busy. You got. I mean, that's three regular appointments you have every week. Not to mention all your appointments with all your your clients, yeah. patients. Yeah. Go ahead. It's a, yeah. it's a commitment to the community. You know, I feel like like I've been given a lot in my life and i've been given whatever gifts i've been given i want to share with the world you know I'm, my, my needs are met and so part of the men's work too is like once your needs are met then you share that abundance back out with the world and whether it's in a form of guidance or support or holding space or taking an hour out of you know a day on your weekend you know yeah what, give from your overflow right right nice yeah and mm -hmm. then we'll build each other up through that process that sounds great um cancer you said that uh, i think you told me before that uh, you helped someone with cancer with acupuncture is that right the previous clinic before me and my wife started our own clinic was a cancer clinic and pelvic floor pain pain clinic and uh most of our patients there were in all different stages of cancer now i'm not going to say that holistic therapies can cure cancer by themselves wholly and completely Sure. Uh, I, mean, I saw patients there that were in all stages, stage one through four of cancer, and some of them were doing chemo, radiation, and acupuncture, and, you know, some herbs or some other lifestyle changes, and they had amazing results when they combined those two, and then lifestyle changes help people, keep people in remission as well, which I saw, you know, like anti-inflammatory diets or some kind of mm -hmm. modification. 
I, I call it a modified paleo diet that I have a lot of my patients on as well. And that, that comes from that time with those cancer patients and seeing them recover, number one, and then number two, staying without cancer. And then the light bulb went off in my head. If I'm not eating like this, what's happening inside my body? Am I going to be creating cancer? Like, I don't want that. So sure. <laughs> that went off. And so I changed my, my lifestyle as being in, in connection with these patients and seeing their results and also being an example of how to live that lifestyle, right? So I want to tell others how to live their life, but also live it and not just, you know, be a mouthpiece for it, but be an example of it. Walk your talk. Amen. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. You can only have so many gummy bears in life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got to have a couple gummy bears here and there. It's, a couple. It's okay. Uh, so um, what, what's uh, aside from listening, what's another secret to intimacy with your partner that uh, you'd like to share that I'm sure has come up in the, in the men's group? I would say explore and have fun. I think there's after a while in a long-term relationship, we've been married uh, 11 years now, uh, that, that, you know, you have to keep it fresh and fun and, and, and let's try new things and explore. So I think that's, that's a big part and just checking in with your partner, what, what's something you'd like to do together, whether it's going on a trip or different things in intimacy. There's, and the, again, this is all about communication, right? It's like, let's like, and, and you can approach it like, Hey honey, I want to have a deeper connection with you. What, what do you want to try? And like that, just leave it kind of open and just see what that brings into the conversation and whatever it's like, I really, I've always had this dream of going to Solvang with someone. And, and that's like my dream with my partner to go there and go to the lavender fields and, you know, just to have this experience, you know, that's cool. And what about you? I'd love to go skydiving with my partner. And okay, well, you know, <laughs> and you can kind of feel that one out or whatever it is, you know. Um, Something just came to me. What do you think of this? I think another important one is surprises. Yeah. I think surprises, whether it's flowers, whether it's a weekend trip somewhere that you planned on your own through Airbnb or whatever, and, and just put out there um, is, is important because it shows you're thinking about things, even when you're not with them, you're planning, you're taking control, taking uh, the reins and creating that space for you guys to have even more expansion when you have a good time on that weekend. That sort of thing. What do you, what do you think about surprise? Uh, I love surprises. I think that's great to, to gift and to surprise is fun, you know, and that's bringing that element of fun into the relationship. That's so important, you know, and then fun. knowing your partner, like there's some surprises, like they're not going to like, you know, and sometimes that's backfired, you know, on occasion as well, or, or my wife, you know, used to, now that we've had kids, used to run late a lot. So I would have a surprise and it'd have a specific time to show up for this event and we wouldn't be anywhere close to it, you know, and then so that, that didn't quite, you know, work out. But but now, but knowing what your part, like, like I love to go camping, right? And my wife likes to go glamping, right? So a glamping <laughs> surprise would be great for her. A camping surprise, not so much. So kind of knowing what 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 excites them, what makes them happy. So you know? glamping is like glamour camping, which sort of means um, camping out in a hotel room, almost. <laughs> yeah, or like having a cabin in the woods, kind of thing. Sure. You know? And there's different levels of cabin accommodations uh, that you can do. There really uh, is. There are yeah, two kinds yeah. of cabins out there. I, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah. What, uh, so just uh, in closing, what, what kind of clients or, or what, what are people going through where they should seek out Healing Light, Family Acupuncture and come see you? Or if they're watching this somewhere else, then go see um, an acupuncturist or one that does energy healing as well. Let's just talk local, the locals. What, locals. Who should come see you? Who, who, uh, who's so, your client? Most of our clients are going to come for, for fertility and pregnancy support, and we're a big part of the birth and fertility community. Uh, so that's definitely, we're a good stop for that. Um, yep. I think those people who are just seeking, who are new to energy work, uh, acupuncture, Reiki, they're looking for some kind of holistic answer is great, or looking for something in addition to, like if you've tried a lot of the Western medic medicines and they haven't worked for you, and West, Western medicine does work for a lot of people, I do believe that, but there are certain people that are more energetic, ethereal, that need a holistic approach and it's better for them, right? Mm -hmm. People that maybe have tried conventional medicine and it hasn't worked so well for them, it's a good time to open up and try something new like acupuncture, Reiki, and energy work. Sounds good. And your website is Healing Light Act. No. Healing Light Family Acupuncture.com. There it is. Okay. Excellent. Monday through Friday. And you don't wear the tie for your men's group, do you? No, no, I, I don't. 
<laughs> I'm an artist <laughs> today, so we're always dressed yeah. up. No, I like it. I like the tie. It looks good. Yeah. Um, all right. And, and, and just in closing also, what, what would you uh, say to people who are thinking about getting into Reiki? Um, like what internal shifts or what should they be thinking about or, and what can they expect? Anytime I've taken energy medicine class, whether it was Reiki, I just took Theta about a month ago, Theta healing, uh, which is a whole other ball of wax, but um, it's, it's amazing. Um, is that whenever you do something like that, you're going to go through a transformative process. And so be ready for a shift. And some people are ready for a shift in their life. And this is a great way to really amplify that shift and move forward. Um, and if, yeah. and, and so this is a great way to really evolve yourself in your life. So energy medicine is a great way to move forward in whatever pattern. If you're feeling stuck or you're like bored and unhappy, this is a great way to just get out of that box you're in open up that box and step into something new. So that's what I would say. Interesting. I bet a lot of people have become seekers through that process of learning to be an energy healer because it just opens up something inside you that you didn't, couldn't anticipate, or maybe couldn't anticipate. I don't know. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. I know what I got to do. <laughs> well, it's always good. Yes, thank you for doing this. This is great. And um, keep up the good work uh, for both you and Tina. And uh, thank you again for doing this. Thank you. Much love, brother. Much love. All right. All right. And thank you all for watching. This has been Interviews on Expansion Network. I'm Scott Ware with Radiance Magazine, Radiance Multidimensional Media. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. The interview I did of Tina on that podcast I had, um, I know that that benefited her by her family finally got to know what she did in a way that they hadn't before. Yeah, it's it's interesting. You know, our personal life and our business life can be very different, right? And your family sees you in the light of whatever you are, the cousin, the child. Right. You know? and, and then when they go, oh, you also cured cancer? Like, oh, well, you're my cousin. Like, he, you know, he farts at the dinner table sometime. That's what I know about him. You know, I, so well, yeah. I mean, chiropractors don't go around like coming up behind somebody and giving them a quick adjustment without knowing. Yeah, you know, this is what I do. I'm a chiropractor. That'd be hilarious. Yeah, you don't you don't do that. <laughs> <That'd be> amazing. <laughs> You're in a bus oh, like, oh God, what was that? Oh my God! You know, like, feel better in your neck? Oh, I feel violated right now, but I feel yeah. better at the same time. It's weird. <laughs> and now I now I do know what you do. Yes. Okay. <laughs>